Hello, welcome back to Bald and Board Games. I'm Bald. I'm Bored. And today we're going to teach you how to play On Mars by Vital Lacerda, published by Eagle Griffin Games. Yeah, this is our seventh how-to out of the Lacerda games. <laughs> That's a lot. Uh, <laughs> if, you've, uh, if you own some of these games and you are never have had a chance to get to the table, feel free, go watch. For the mm -hmm. first six we have, we have a how-to and a playthrough. Yep. This one, the playthrough will be launched in a few hours if you're watching <laughs> this right as it went live. As Nick just Sorry. COVIDed me. I was like trying to cough away from the microphone. <laughs> and then I was like, oh no, I'm pointing right at Steve. Uh, <coughs> no way, here we go. <laughs> no COVID. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yes, feel free to check that out. Uh, in a few weeks, uh, we will have our ratings for Vitalis Serta. So yeah, we'll, actually, go, we'll go through and we'll, we'll rate each one like we have other ones in the past, and then we'll actually uh, do a hierarchy for ourselves on uh, where we would put each of the games that we played. What we'll probably do, I think, to make it easiest is we'll put our hierarchy and where that stands at the end of each rating video. Oh, yeah. So that way, like as we go through the rating video at the end, we'll say, this is my number fifth game. Instead of having a whole separate video where we're literally just like putting them in order, we'll just do the end of each review video. We'll say that's yeah. my fifth of the whatever we played. Yeah. Yeah. So stand by. And watch for that. But we are here for On Mars. We are On Mars. So I want to give you the little game overview real quick here about what On Mars is. The game is played over several rounds, each consisting of two phases, the colonization phase and the shuttle phase. Uh, Steve will tell you what those mean a little bit later on. During the colonization phase, each player takes a turn during which they take actions. The actions a player is able to take depends on the side of the board they're on. If players are on the space station in orbit, uh, they can take blueprints, buy and develop technologies, and take supplies from the warehouse. If players are in a colony of the surface of the planet, they can construct buildings with their bots, upgrade these buildings using blueprints, hire scientists, and take new contracts, welcome new ships, and explore the planet's surface with their rovers. In the shuttle phase, players travel between the colony and space station in orbit. All buildings on Mars have a dependency on each other, and some are required for the colony to grow. Building shelters for colonists to live in requires oxygen. Generating oxygen requires plants. Growing plants requires water. Extracting water from ice requires power. Generating power requires mining minerals, and mining minerals requires colonists. Well, not, not dwarfs? Not dwarfs, unfortunately. Uh, wrong yeah. universe. Yeah. No, same universe, just on planet. <laughs> Uh, upgrading the colony's abilities and provide each of the resources is vital. As the colony grows, more shelters are needed so that the colonists can survive the inhospitable conditions on Mars. During the game, players are trying to complete missions. Once a total of three missions have been completed, the game ends. To win the game, players must contribute the most to the development of the first colony on Mars. This is represented during the game by players gaining opportunity points, referred to as OP, the player with the most OP at the end of the game is declared the winner, and they are the most OP. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if Overpower. you're wondering, what does On Mars look like? Well, here it is. This is everything. So we have player boards, game board, sideboards, resources, everything. Sideboard. The I think I believe this sideboard in particular. I don't know if that one. I, th I think just this one in particular uh, does come with the upgrade pack. So if you have the base version, you probably just have the main board and I believe the scientist board. Uh, that's over there. There are some other cards as well uh, that will mention primarily the, the private goals uh, that are also part of the upgrade pack as well. Yeah. So we'll call that out. Ready to dive in? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So uh, first up, we're going to get a little bit closer. We're going to go over the orbit setup. So the orbit area, there we are, is this area right in here on the left side of the board. And the first thing you're gonna do is this uh, discovery tiles that are up here above the board. Yep, there we are right there, boom. You're gonna shuffle those up into two different stacks and then you're gonna take one of each and you're gonna put them down onto their location in this shuttle area. All right. Next we have the warehouse, which is down here in the lower left-hand corner. So for a two-player game, you're gonna be using just two of these sections. If you're using three or more, of course you'd use all of them. We're gonna be going over the two player setup. So one of each in these two sections, including two crystals. Pretty straightforward. Uh, next we do have the tech tiles. That's this area here. Now there are two different sets of tech tiles. 
There are these, the darker back and another one with the lighter back. In a two player game, you're only gonna choose one set to use and you will place these all out. I had them upside down to illustrate the uh, color and the backside, but you can just put them out randomly. Uh, upside down works but probably pretty well that we're not choosing where they're going because it doesn't matter. Okay, those are on point there. We also have our pool of resources, our, our crystals up there. And then lastly, we have our blueprint card. So this big area over here to the side of the, there we go, perfect. So the blueprint area is gonna consist of two different decks of cards here, ones and the threes. And this is referring to the cost to create them, which you'll find out later how to create them. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna shuffle each of these decks separately, ba 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 ba. You're gonna put the ones on top of the threes and you're gonna take the first six ones and lay them out on the bottom row like so. And then the rest of the deck will go right back over there, waiting until your colony advances. And that is the orbit setup. Very simple, very easy. Yep, and the colony setup pr pretty much as simple. Colony is this whole half of the board over here. We have all the different zones set up. So the first thing is off to the right hand side, we have scientists. So you can see that right here. There's actually six slots. There are six different scientists, each with a different little mini and a card representing its benefits. So you're going to lay that out on the appropriate spot. You can see the symbol here matches the symbol there and slide it in. So it's covering the top slot, showing the resource costs down below. Next thing you'll have right off to the right is your building tiles. The building tiles are stacked based on color. So the blue ring is the blue tiles. You'll take the stack, shuffle them up, place them in. And then the thing down here shows the cost, which we'll talk about later. Moving back to the main board, in the dead center, you have your tile setup. So you're going to be building tiles, those building tiles we just went over, as the game progresses. <laughs> but first, you have starting tiles. So you have one that's brown. That is the dead center mining tile. It will have a picture of the symbol of the mineral that Nick brought up earlier. There are four others, as you can see with the four other colors. Shuffle those up, lay them out, and then when you're ready for game start, flip them over. You should have one water, one oxygen, one plant, and one electrical or battery. So those will set up just as so. The final area is down here in the corner. And that, uh, we'll just leave this for you. Uh, <laughs> that here is the LSS board. The LSS will track your progress over time as you're building those different areas. If you go to the middle side, you can get a good view of it. Ah, look at that. Who would have thought? <laughs> uh, so you have little tokens here that will just go on space number one for a two-player game. You have this little cool ship that will go onto the number two on the left-hand side. And then you'll have a bunch of tiles that say LSS on the back. There's probably about 10 of them or so. Shuffle those up, lay them out, one in each of these four squares up above, put the rest back in the box. The other things you have on this game board are these mission cards. So these mission cards, there is a short version, which is half gray, half red, and there's a long version, which is all red. If you want to play the long version, you take two of the full colored, one and a half. If you want to play a short version, you would find in the box two of these and then only one of these. So again, you shuffle them up, you grab them appropriately, and you'll lay them out into the spaces A, B, and C. One there, one here, and one here. Once you have set that section up of those tiles, you want to do two things. Number one, identify the number for based on the player count. So in a two-player game, this number is five. This little uh, cube. cube. Thank you. <laughs> I was going to say gem. That's not a gem. It's a cube. This little gem. <laughs> it goes on the five. Oh, uh, you can't see. Uh, yep, there we go. Uh, this goes on the five. Down here, same thing. It's a five. And here, it's a four. As the player count increases, the value where that would mm. go also increases. And then they also give you these fun little markers. The way to utilize these is just to make it a little clearer for, especially if you have like four to five people playing, mm -hmm. uh, on where things are located. So in the upper left-hand corner, this is identifying scientists, which are 
over here. So you would place the marker somewhere to help you indicate that this is for scientists. That would be this section here, because that's where that action is, which we'll explain shortly. B is going to be tiles that are going to be on the board here in a moment. So you can just leave B right here on top of the B if you want. Oh, you can oh, put it right here, too. So it's just when they're removed, yeah. And then C here is those discovery tiles at the top of the board. So you can put it, <laughs> knock everything around. Actually, those would be the same thing, same spot. Oh yeah, they, yeah we the did same that spot. in our playthrough. We put it up there. That's true. Because we thought we thought this meant like whenever they went on the board when we first started playing, setting it up, and then as we we're playing, like oh, it's actually when you pick them up, same as that. Yes. Uh, and then the final things are these little research tiles. So you have two A's, two B's, two C's, two D's. All of them are the same. You don't have to worry about shuffling or anything. But you find corner A, you place the two there. Corner B, corner C, and although they, although they don't mark it, this would be corner D. So you place those down. That is your starting game board setup, right and left sides as we went through. So then we go on to a player. Yeah, you got player boards, player boards, and a bunch of pieces. I move this over here a little bit so you can see all these guys on the side here. All my little homies, also known as colonists. Toot, toot, toot. Why aren't there colonists? Colons. Well, I'm sure there are colonists, but <laughs> you know, they are there. Okay, so you have a lot of things going on here. So first, let's start with all the pieces that you have, and then we'll go over where they go, what they mean. So off to the side here on your player board, you have five ships. You will be unlocking these and placing them into this section throughout the game. Here, you're going to have one of each resource and a cube to go along with each resource. You'll find out when these cubes are used. Uh, Steve will talk about that. Here you have the very first tech tile that everyone starts with, and this is referring specifically to building shelters, and this starts on the spot that matches that tech tile. Over here you have four shelters that are unbuilt, so on one side is your shelter. Uh, these go face down as a reminder showing you that it costs one oxygen to build those shelters. Down here you have three of your colonists, the rest are on this side. So you should have a total of 12. Three will be on your board. The other nine will be off your board to the side, waiting for orders. You have four robots off to the side of your board, one of which you will be using and putting on the board in a moment. You have your player marker here, which we'll be putting on the board as well in a moment. You have eight advanced buildings, upgraded buildings that you will be putting on the board as you do so. And you have your rover, which technically is starting on that original mine space, but you keep it off the board until you move it. And then lastly here, you do have some private goals. So traditionally in the base game, you're only gonna have these three darker private goals. So you'll shuffle up, each person will get dealt three at random, and these will be the goals that you have throughout the game. You can only ever score one of these during the game, and uh, in the rule book, it explains how to score them and what the things mean. So you can refer to that because there's a bunch of them. Just know that you can only score one of these for this side. And the remainder have a crystal and uh, this little symbol here. That means you can cash them at any point in time as a crystal. You're not turning it in to get a crystal. You can literally just use it as a crystal by discarding it. The last one that we have here, this light blue one, this is from the upgrade pack. And they're all the same. They give you a pattern. And this pattern will match your tech tile place. And the orange areas are where you would want to finish with tech tiles to gain the points listed on that card. So you'll have four cards if you're using that extra one. If you're not using the extra ones, you'll have three to start with. So on the player board, this is your ship bay or your depot area. This houses all your executive actions and the crystals that you can have. So throughout the game, you will get crystals. When you get crystals, they will go in this bottom section here. You can't use them until your next turn. Uh, once the next turn comes, you'll place them in the available spots. So you start off with three available areas, but you only start off with one crystal. To unlock more, you'll have to unlock these ships, and we'll explain how to do so. When ships are unlocked, they'll move over to your bay here, and we'll explain what that does as well. I mentioned here, this is your tech tile area. This will house all your tech tiles and uh, they do various things for you. And there is a way to shift those around. 
down here, these are your resources like we've gone over. Uh, there is a limit to the number of resources you can have. It shows on here, the little house plus one. That means that the number of resources you can have in each area is equal to your shelter plus one. So right now we're all gonna have one shelter at the moment, which means each of these can house two of their respective resources. Over here, you have your shelters waiting to be built and you have your living quarters, like I mentioned beforehand, with three colonists to start. So lastly, you have to get our pieces onto the board here to finish player setup. So we each have a starting piece here. So there's an S with your color and you will place this down. Uh, so traditionally these would be upside down so you wouldn't know what those were. For a two player game, it's gonna be this spot and that spot. So we would choose one or the other without knowing what's around it. And you're just gonna put that down like so and I your robot go here. will go on top. <laughs> yeah, last spot to go there. Uh, so then you have to determine who first player is. And the way that you would traditionally determine first player with On Mars is going to be whoever has seen The Martian most recently or the most, or you can roll a d6, determine first player, however you choose. Uh, we'll let Steve go first. And so what he's going to be doing right now as first player is the top of the board here. There's these four sections in white. He's going to be choosing where he would like to put his player marker, one of these, uh, on any of those, and he will gain the benefit for doing so and same as before those benefits are listed in the reference guide yep. uh the white spaces obviously are just nothing and then the other yep. six have value there's also an extended uh version of this which we did yep. uh where there's a bunch of cards over here that you can just take out you'll shuffle them up each one has one of the six symbols on it yep. you take one and you just go to where it tells you to go yeah kind of change gives you some variety to the game um that's probably a good way to play with people who haven't played this before that way there's no advantage for people who have played it and they just kind of go based on what's given to them that's true so where are you going uh so i'm gonna go to number eight right here which this picture identified says you get a blueprint yep. so i'm gonna go there and i'm gonna get a green blueprint so for that we'll go over uh the blueprint action uh, later in the game, but so he's going to take this card from that blueprint stack that we set up previously. The blueprint stack does not refill when a card is taken from it. Okay. Right. So now I'm going to place mine down and I'm going to go uh, right over here. And that lets me take a resource from the warehouse. So I'll take an oxygen. Bless you. Nice. Uh, the warehouse also does not refill. When this is taken, it will refill at a very specific point in time, which we'll go over later in the game. All right. So putting those player pieces down, you get the benefit. Now, the player who is the furthest to the right, the higher number, so this is number one, that's number eight, they get to choose where the shuttle goes first. So they're going to put it on one of the two red one shuttle spots. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds about right. And that is the setup for each player. You have your pieces, you have your board set up, you have your characters on the board now determining player order and the shuttle determining where it is starting off for your game. So in this instance, the shuttle is starting off in the colony, which means that we're going to orbit after we take our turns. Yeah, so for gameplay, now that everything's set up and you're ready to run, uh, turn order will go left to right now in a typical clockwise fashion. For the phases of the game, there's two main phases. You have your colonization phase. That phase at a high level is these steps along the orbit. You're going to be taking actions. There's a bunch available. There's 10 different ones across the board that Nick and I will cover momentarily. And then you have an executive action, which we'll also cover. So during your step, so let's say you were on three, so during step three, you would do one exec, you could do one executive action, and then you have to do one board action. And then you go number two, so on, and number one. Once you've gone to that red one and finalized the turn for all players, you will go into your second part, which is the shuttle phase. And that'll be moving the shuttle from colony to orbit or from orbit to colony. Mm -hmm. And that'll entail a few different steps, which we'll cover after we explain everything else that goes on on this board. All right. Uh, there's a couple of key things to know before we dive uh, into the actions and stuff, just so you are aware. So there are actions that gain you resources. Gaining resources means you take them from the various supplies. So from here or from over there. 
And so that's going to be anytime you're told to gain a resource and it doesn't use the warehouse symbol, which is the three cubes that are stacked. If there's the warehouse symbol, it means you take it from the warehouse. If there's nothing in the warehouse, well, there's nothing for you to take. <laughs> so definitely four cubes. You gotta wait. Huh? There's definitely four cubes there. There has to be a cube under the top one. It doesn't have to be? Yeah. No, you can't just have one levitating. You can't see it though. So who knows? <laughs> who knows? You might. Uh, so that's the difference between gaining and the, this warehouse action. Uh, I covered that when you do your resources, you do have a limit on how much you can hold. Again, that's the number of shelters you have. So this is a shelter we have here, plus one. So we can each hold two of each resource right now. Gaining crystals, I mentioned quickly as well. Whenever you gain a crystal, it goes into the bottom area of your depot, which you cannot use until your next turn, which is why it's down here. So once your turn is done, you can move it up. If you have this full and you have crystals left over, any leftover crystals that don't have a slot to go into, they are removed. You can't keep them. They don't carry over. Uh, then we have building complexes, which will come up during the game. So a complex is going to be any number of the same tiles that are next to each other and connected. So these gray ones, if there was another one here, that would be a complex consisting of two of those tiles, okay? Uh, turn order is gonna be based on the track to the top here. So turn order is gonna be the leftmost to the rightmost. So the reverse of what we just did for setup. And uh, we have your hexes. So right now we have our robots on these hexes. So there can only ever be one piece per hex. So if I chose to build an advanced building on this hex, it's going to bump this robot off. It's called displacement. So let's put them on an empty hex somewhere else. If Steve had a building here, I could not place it there. I'd have to go on one of the other hexes around that were empty. Boom. And lastly, we do have colonist types on the board, and this will come in handy for the actions we're about to go over. On the board, you will see red colonists and teal colonists, these blue ones. The red colonist actions mean you have to put a colonist onto a space there, where the teal colonist means that after doing an action, you can spend more colonists from your board by placing them into your working area. And that colonist you played beforehand would have come from your working area also. So you're limited to what you have on your actual board. And for most actions where you can use a colonist to, it's called boosting an action, you can use as many as you have available in your living quarters on your board. All right, so now we have our actual action. So we're gonna start off in this orbit section and we'll just go top down to keep it easy. Number one, is kind of the most obscure action until you actually play the game. This is uh, the landing pod. So by doing this action, you get to go from orbit to the colony when you do that. So you don't have to wait for the shuttle and you don't have to spend a ship to do so. So doing this action, you will skip over this portion of that action, which would be choosing one of these tiles and uh, putting it on the board which we'll cover in detail during the shuttle phase when we go over that. Instead, you jump right to collecting colonists, like we'll go over in depth, and then placing your person over here in one of these four areas and collecting the bonus for such. That's it for the landing pod. Next, we have the blueprint action. So this was what Steve took by putting his character up there to begin with. So when you do this action, you'll be placing one of your colonists from your board into one of these spots located there. And uh, I don't know if I had this for me to explain or for you to explain, but because I'm talking about it, I'm just gonna go over it. <laughs> sure. So for a two player game, uh, well, for any game, whenever you place another colonist here, if there's already one there, you have to pay a crystal or another worker to be able to take that action. So here, I have one character there. If I put another one down, I have to pay that cost. So I'm going to pay one crystal to be able to do that action. If I want to do it again in a later turn, because we're in a two player game, I would have to pay two different items to do that. So either two crystals or two workers or one crystal and one worker. If a fourth was to go down, so if Steve ended up putting one there, all of these would clear out 
and he wouldn't have to pay anything. He would just put his person there. So this goes for any color colonist. If you are third in line, you're paying two resources. If you're second in line, you're paying one resource. If you're fourth in line or first in line, you don't have to pay any resources. All right. And on that action for blueprint, that allows you to take a blueprint from the side over here. When you take a blueprint, which I didn't do for Steve earlier, uh, you get the resource that is on the blueprint. So Steve earlier took a green blueprint, so he gets a green resource. If I was this action and took a blue blueprint, I would take the blue water resource. This would go over to the side of your board. You put one of your advanced buildings on top of it because it's waiting to be built. And again, it does not refill. The boosting action for this, if I did choose to use one of my colonists, I'd put them in my working area next to the living quarters. So here. And if I do so, I could take another blueprint and I could do it again. I could put it over and take another blueprint and you can go for as many colonists as you have. All right. Now there is pros and cons to taking blueprints, uh, which we will cover later <laughs> yes. uh, and it won't matter. So you don't want to just go willy nilly and take no. as many blueprints as you can. Pay attention to the cards. So. Yes. <laughs> Cause I did not the first time. <laughs> uh, next you have tech tiles. So here's where you can buy tech tiles, which will go onto your player board. So in the bottom row here, there is no cost. In the middle, it's gonna cost you one of the white batteries. The top is gonna to cost you a white battery and any other resource. So this could be a mineral or the other resources. Any other resource is not a crystal. So if I was gonna take this bottom blue tech tile on my board, it's gonna go with my other tech tiles. It has to go in one of the first uh, spots in the beginning to start. So if I put it here, then I would be taking a resource from the warehouse. If I put it down here, then I'd be taking a crystal from the supply. So it's gonna sit there. And now that tech tile has various effects. But what it means is at the top here, there is a plus one, plus two, plus three, four, five, and six marker. That means that whatever tech tiles in that column benefits by that. So if this water one here, if I'm building a water building, traditionally, you could only build one water building. You couldn't build them connected to each other. But by having this here, I can build one plus one, so two, which means I can have a complex, like I mentioned beforehand, so two water tiles next to each other. And then as, as that moved up, I'd be able to build more and more. So you see here, my shelter has a plus two. So that means I can build a total of three shelters all connected to each other. This does not dictate the number of water tiles you can have on the board. It only dictates the size of your complex, the number of those tiles connected to each other. And this will go for every other action you do. If it's moving your rover, and if it's under the plus three, that means you can move your rover the normal amount plus three more spaces because you have that tech tile. Also, if somebody else has a tech tile unlocked, so if Steve had the rover tech tile, then I could use his tech tile to move my rover additional spaces. But in doing so, he's gonna get an oxygen for me using his tech tile, and he can freely advance his tech tile up the track at no cost. Didn't use that at all in our playthrough because I totally forgot that was a thing. Yeah, we didn't use it at all. I was looking to see like what you had, and I was like, I didn't really need to use it whatsoever. I should have, because I, I thought I was like, oh, I could shelter. never build complexes. Yeah, you could have put your shelter. Because, well, I could, I have my own shelter. Well, I had mine at three, you could have done it. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so pay attention to every everyone else's board and what tech they have on there because it could benefit you. It'll benefit them a little bit, but it could benefit you more if need be. So speaking of upgrading tech tiles, that is the next one down here. And I apologize, I forgot to mention, but on the tech tile, it has that same teal uh, colonist as well, which means you can use colonists you have in your, your um, living quarters by moving your working area to take additional tech tiles, paying the cost like everything else. So. Upgrading a tech tile has the red colonist, which again means you have to take one from your living quarters and place it down. Same rules apply here as it did above. For every additional colonist you put on, that uh, other colonist are in front of it, you have to pay a cost, which is going to be one crystal per colonist, or one colonist goes in your working area per colonist, or a combination of that thing. Uh, additionally, here you have the teal columns at the bottom, which means you can take this action over and over again by moving a columns into your working area. You'll see this happen in all these actions. 
The red ones, you put one down, you pay extra for each other colonist that's there, and Teal will let you use colonists to do that action over and over again, kind of comboing things. So for this upgrading a tech tile on your board, comes down here, so you can move a tech tile twice or, one tech, or uh, two tech tiles once. So I could take this one and move it twice, and you can see on the board, there's these little areas. So I can't go from here down to the bottom. It has to go to an adjacent space. So I can move this here and up to there. And in doing so, you just have to pay the cost associated with such. So if I were to move this here, I have to pay one oxygen, denoted there. If I moved it up again, I have to pay another oxygen for doing so. I could also move each of these once. So I can move this guy once to here and pay an oxygen. I can move this over once, and it says I have to pay any resource, so I want to pay a water for that one. And uh, it does have to advance forward, so you're not going up or down. You're always moving these tech tiles forward as you're advancing them, because you're upgrading them. And next, we have our warehouse down here at the bottom. The warehouse, you're not required to put any kind of colonist down to do this action. You just say, I'm doing this action and you take a resource from the warehouse. I'm gonna take this green, put it on my board. If I wanted to take more, that's where I could use the colonist by putting it in my working area. And I'm gonna take a crystal. And those are all of the basic main actions that we have on the orbit side. Very simple, landing pod lets you go to the colony, blueprints, take blueprints, tech tiles, buy tech tiles, upgrade tech tiles, advancing them forward, and the warehouse lets you take those resources from the warehouse if they're available. Let me go on over to the colony side. Yeah. We have more and a few, they're a little bit more involved. Yeah, colony side's a little bit <laughs> uh, more intricate. Yep. Uh, it definitely requires you to plan things ahead on this side because uh, certain ones require the previous actions to kind of work in the flow of things. So starting at the top, we have our construct a building. And now, based on how Nick and I are explaining this, we're going through what they are. Mm -hmm. If you look at the board, you're like, okay, I see a picture of a tile. Yep. What does that really mean? Thankfully, they give you a nice little player aid. One side for the colony, yeah. one side for the orbit. And it goes through step by step exactly what we're going to explain. Mm -hmm. But for construct a building, very simple. You place your person here. All of the same things Nick said in terms of how these fill in when there's the red overhang is still the same for the top two here. What you do for this is you're gonna go over to the right hand side to your building grouping and you're gonna pick a tile. There are a few requirements. No, requirement number one is you have to be able to pay the cost. So if I'm looking, I'm like, okay, I wanna get a green tile. So I'm gonna take a green tile. I'm gonna pay one blue. You don't pay the color of the tile, you pay what's under the tile, so a blue resource. Then I come out to the game board to play the tile. In order to play a tile, two things need to be true. Number one, if I want to play a colony, meaning I want this green to touch the other green, I have to have the green tech tile, or Nick or your, any opponent has to have it, and then you have to pay them the oxygen, as Nick mentioned. The other requirement is the location of this bot. So you have your bot. You can't just say, I'm going to build this way over here. <laughs> That's not possible. You can only build within the sphere of influence of your bot, which is the space your bot is on in one space in every direction. I'm breaking out some Madara terminology. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in order to do this, I do not have the tactile necessary, neither does Nick. I can place it right here. It has to be two away, exactly two away from the any one of the same color. Yeah. So if there was other greens out here, it could be two away from any of those greens, but it has to be two away from at least one green and not touching a green if you don't have the tech tile. So I place that down. I now gain green uh, earth plant life uh, <laughs> times however many are in green earth plant life. <laughs> times however many are in that complex. In this case, it's one. I get my one. I put it down. Now, for me, I just stack three green. One That's point. not possible. Because I only have one shelter, so I have to give this green back. You cannot swap it for another resource or anything mm -hmm. like that. If it, you already have the max, you don't get any more. Yep. 
Next on that stage is you're going to go over to this LSS board. If you are the first person on the turn to place or on any round or to place that color down, you're going to advance this up one. You can never advance it higher than the row this marker is on. So if you're the first one to do it, you advance it one. If someone else does it, they cannot advance it themselves until this marker moves up again. Once you've moved it up one, you're going to gain any benefit in this space. So this whole line says two OP or your victory points. You also gain the top benefit here on whatever that tile is. So this tile is saying you're going to gain one OP based on each colonist in your living quarters, which is your player board. So right now I have two extra colonists. So based on that, I would gain two plus two from that. So I'd go up four. Additionally, in the upper left-hand corner, you have four options. You can choose one of those four options. You can either pull back a colonist from any space on the board. You can move your ro a robot uh, two spaces, up to two spaces. You can get a crystal from the supply or you can get a mineral from the supply your choice, but you have to do it at the moment that this triggers. You can't just bank it for later. Yeah. So that is the construct a building. Once you've constructed a building, you now want to upgrade that building. Similar to the tech tiles, you want to be able to upgrade and get better benefits. So in order to do that, again, you place your meeple down. Now, on the board, you need to not only have the appropriate color available without anything on top, meaning a building. So if there's a robot here, that's fine, but you cannot have a building and then build another building on that same space. You can only have one advanced building per tile. Just demolish it. <laughs> yeah, just knock this one down. Uh, same requirement, you can only build within the sphere of your bot, and you must have a blueprint to do so. So over here, that's why I got the green blueprint. I have that, I have my little building. I have to pay one mineral cost, I take my building, I put it on the green. That now means on the recycle stage and moving from orbit to orbit, I can gain more resources because I have advanced technology on that tile. Mm -hmm. You're smart or something, huh? Eh? Yeah. For example, let's say my bot was there and I placed this down. Similar to Nick's example before, this would be displaced. And then I would get, as the owner of the bot, place it anywhere in the surrounding tile zones, either on a tile that's empty or any of the open space. That would go the same for a, uh, a colonist as well. So if a colonist is on a mining area and you build a shelter, or, uh, advanced building on it, then the colonist would go back to your working area if possible. Yes. Third of the five is this space right here. This acts slightly differently. So you can see here, you have the four colors for the four different players. If you want to do this action, you would place your meeple in the appropriate color zone. Unlike up here where I can go back and do this on a future round, this is the only time you can do this. You have to go through the phase in the shuffle, or the shuffle, the shuttle phase to be able to bring these workers back to do this again. Mm -hmm. What this is, is gathering cards. So off to the side here, you have those scientists. You're just going to gather a scientist, pay the resource cost underneath. So I have two green resources. I'm going to get the geochemist. So I take the geochemist card. I bring it to the side of my player board with the little meeple on top. This is now an empty zone. As you continue your turn, you would finish anything you need to do, executive actions or anything else in that action. Then once your turn is over, you're going to take the deck here. You can flip it up and look through it, and you're going to place a new card down. There's a bunch of different variety of cards in here. They're all explained in the main rule book mm -hmm. as well as in the reference guide for the expansion because uh, some of these are the expansion version. Uh, things to think about is either player can then get these on future turns. So you don't want to put anything out there that potentially another player can steal from you. So I'm going to go through and be like, oh, I found one that maybe I think I can do that. My opponent's probably not going to try. Mm -hmm. I place that down on the bottom now. So you no longer have the resource. You place it on the bottom. The resource cost is now one crystal. The fourth action is moving your rover and your bot. 
So as you can see, my bot is right here. As Nick mentioned, the rover starts in the middle. So if I do that action where we have a little meeple there. Uh, yep. As Nick called me because we did this in our playthrough. <laughs> you don't need... So there's no red topper here. Yeah. You do not need to use a meeple. So let's say in this perfect example, I ran out of meeples in my living quarters. I thankfully do not need to spend meeples to do this action. So there are actions you still can take if you run out of meeples in your living quarters. And that's true on both sides, the orbit and the colony. No, you just claim you're doing it. That's all. Yes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to place the rover on top of the mine. And now, as you can see, it says times two times two. That is true for the base. If you do have tiles that allow you to get advancement, you just add on top of that number. But we're going to move two for each. So your rover would move two in whatever direction you want to go. Your bot would move two. Let's say where it is right now is where I started, and now I'm doing that action. What I can do is nice. Uh, go and clean house, per se. The bot is a destructor. All they will do is destroy everything they touch on any tile. Or Terminator. Uh, yeah, except advanced buildings. They won't destroy an advanced building. So if I go down here and move one, two on top of this tile, the bot just destroys the tile. Uh, yep, if there's a discovery tile, same thing. The bot goes over it. It's destroyed. If the bot goes over a crystal, destroyed. The crystal would just go back to the supply. The discovery tile would not go back into the supply of discovery tiles. It'll just go off to the map on the side. Yep. Same thing with this, but I'll cover this in a moment as to why I'm leaving it right here for a second. On the rover side, he gathers everything. So the rover, if it goes over a crystal, will gather the crystal. It goes into the little depot section. Again, at the end of your turn, if you already have, you're already filled up, then the crystal would go back to the supply. If it lands on this space here, he would gather. And if it lands on this space, he would gather. Both of these two tile types are activate upon touching it. So it immediately goes into effect. So if I were to move here, technically before I move again, I would have to grab this, do what it says, and then move a second time to pick up the next one. Let's just uh, zoom in down here, and let's say that I moved the bot to take this one, and I moved my rover to take these in this order from left to right. The reason I put this over here is I don't get to do this action. The bot destroyed it, but there is something very specific to our game board right now, which is our goal card. This goal card here says any time A, B, C, or D discovery tiles not discovery tiles, research tiles, are taken off the board, <laughs> this marker above it will automatically move down one, and I would gain two crystals. So even though the tile itself, I cannot take that action, I can still gain the two crystals. Mm -hmm. For letter B down here, this one was truly grabbed by the rover. Again, it triggers that marker up top for that goal. And I get two crystals. So now my player board, I have five crystals sitting down here. I don't even have enough spaces to unlock that. <laughs> but we're going to keep them there just because yeah. it looks cool. Just because because it looks cool. <laughs> so this here is a symbol that Nick showed earlier. It means yeah. you can move your tech tiles down the line to the right. The only difference in the upper left-hand corner here, it has a line through the resource cost. You do not need to pay any of these resource costs up top to do this. So I can just go from right to left. Yep, from left to right. Go here, I gain a mineral. And then I'll go here into the middle. <laughs> mineral. From right to left. <laughs> yeah. This is now put off to the side of your player board. And it will remain there for the rest of the game. The reason it's going to sit on your player board, it doesn't give you end game scoring but you cannot claim a second of the same letter. Mm -hmm. So I killed D and claimed B. I can now claim the other D because that one is still viable, but I cannot just move my ro rover over and grab this one as well. <laughs> rover, rover. <laughs> over, over. <laughs> red rover, red rover. Oh, great game. Over I love that game. <laughs> it's to murder just children. Yeah. Kids. Oh my goodness, terrible. Build strength. Um, character. Yeah. 
So then we're moving on to the discovery tile, which is this. This says I get three X of this resource. Again, I already have one. I can only hold two. So I would only get an additional one. Goes on top. All of these resources are automatically available to you right now, except the gems. What this, gem? This token would then come off, can go onto the side of your player board or discard it. Doesn't matter. You won't use it again. And there is no endgame points for those discovery tiles. Actually, I'm lying. Uh, keep it on the side of your player board because certain expansions it matters mm. uh, based on what goal cards and everything you have. Yeah, some of those, yeah. So just read your uh, goal cards. You'll know if you need to keep any of these tiles. Yep. So if I have perfect example, this goal card right here says as soon as you collect three of these discovery tiles, you can redeem this goal card. So yeah, just keep them off the side of your player board for future reference. Yep. So that is these four here. The final thing about this moving the rover and bot is there's not a person underneath this one. There's a diamond. You can spend gems that are available, not the ones in the depot reserve, but the ones that are available to continue movement. So let's say, for example, I have one gem down here available to me, and I know that one of these three cards I'm not going to be able to do. So I can use that instantly for the lightning bolt gem. I'm going to redeem those and move my bot here, oh, destroy yeah, yeah, yeah. the other letter D, which moves this down yet again, and I get two more crystals <laughs> to the supply that I still can't use. Farming crystals. So yeah. reasons for that is, <laughs> let's say, for example, Nick's bot was right here when I did this. I, or let, let's, say his ro uh, yeah. let's say his rover was right here. I can do this to clean house and be like, you're not going to be able to get those abilities because I'm looking at his tech tiles over here and be like, oh, he's trying to move them. And I can just clean them out. So definitely use those crystals wisely and utilize your bot to just uh, knock your opponent down a ledge. Just trying to have some fun, man. Making a confrontation. <laughs> <laughs> so again, at the end of your turn now, if you look at my player board, if I were just finishing that turn, I would take as many crystals as I can to fill in the slots. The rest would go back. To the supply. What waste. <laughs> the final action over here is the gain a ship. No required uh, meeple colonist to use, but you can do it multiple times by changing colonists from your living quarters into your working area. Working area. Yeah. So if we go back to my player board, here is a ship. As you can see on the left-hand side, in order to get the ship, you need to pay one plant and one water. I don't have that, but let's say I had two minerals. I can redeem minerals as wild for that. Now the ship comes into this loading bay. It does two things. Number one, it gives me another spot for a gem. So that's beneficial. You can gain more and more gems because some of these will cost more and more as you go up the line. Also, you will gain one of the two benefits listed here. You either can gain two new colonists from your reserve and they go into your living quarters, or you gain one colonist and one bot. I'm going to gain one colonist and I'm going to gain a bot. The colonist will go into my living quarters. The bot will come out onto the game board and go onto one of my settlements or shelters. Let's say I had two or three shelters down. You could pick which one. But I only have one, so it's going to go right there. Yep. Uh, and again, if there was a advanced building there, you would just displace your bot one space away. Yeah. You get one more bonus for unlocking the ships, too. You, uh, you get the access to the executive action that was next to it. That is true. Yeah. So the executive action listed here is only available upon that ship being redeemed. Uh, let's just say I had enough resources to redeem two ships. I now have access to both of those. They do cost a little more. You can see three, 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 four, and four. But they definitely can come and play later in the game, uh, especially when you come to comboing, something we never did, really, <laughs> is use any of these higher level except uh, mineral. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to have two here, and let's just say I took two more colonists down here, and one of them would have gone here. The benefit, too, is perfect example, actually. 
I got one colonist when I did the ship build. I can now use that colonist to build the second ship. Mm -hmm. And now, boom, boom, I have two new colonists. As well as you spent the resources appropriately. And that is the orbit side of the five actions. The colony. Colony side. <laughs> the anti-orbit. Yeah. Uh, I there was one thing that we missed over the, the LSS area. Oh, I didn't cover moving it yet. That was really Oh, you mentioned you mentioned it. You mentioned oh, I mentioned it. just moving it. Oh, yeah, I didn't cover. That you just part. But anyway, you're good. Yes. Oh, yeah, good call. I would say this too. So I was going to cover that for mission. Yeah. Uh, this section here on the bottom is your colony tracker. If at any point in the game you build a colony, so let's say I had another green, because I had the green tech tile, or Nick had the green tech tile. Actually, who do, what does he have? Blue? You have blue. Nick has the blue tech tile. So we're going to place a blue right here, and I gave him an oxygen for it. Mm -hmm. By having this, I now can mark this space by using the little cube under my blue indicated resource. It would go on top of the matching color. Boom. It just sits there for the rest of the game. It doesn't do anything right now, but it will help with end game scoring. Yeah. But thanks for the reminder. I forgot about that. Yes. All right. Are we ready for the shuttle phase? Yes. So okay. what happens up top of this board? Very simple. So the shuttle is on the colony side, which when we finish our actions on this space, it's going to be moving to the orbit side. So we'll say that I'm over here with Steve. In turn order, each person is going to do the actions here and then place their character pawn on the opposite side if they choose to. So I will say, okay, here, I'm going to get the benefits for that space. So what it is, it's going to look at the board and say, okay, where do you have any, we'll put one out to say, any colonists out, of course, it's mine. Yeah. And what's the place you have colonists to be on mines? Yeah, but yeah. of course. <laughs> any colonists out, which will always be on mines. And do you have any advanced buildings? We'll say I have an advanced building uh, up here. And if you do, you'll get the benefit from such. So for the mine, you'll get the mineral. And for the advanced building on this white space, you would get the white uh, battery. And it's depicted on the <laughs> tile. So if it was on the blue, you'd get the water, plant, you get the plant. Now, if this was over here on the blue, since there's two of them connected, I would get two of the blue resource because they're connected. Uh, the shelter nets you crystals. And so this is your supply phase where everything that you put out comes in onto your board. All limits still apply when placing things on your board. So again, resources are your number of shelters plus one. Crystals are your number of open spots for those crystals. After that, you're on to this next section, which is retrieve any of your colonists. We'll say that I had uh, one here and I had one there. We'll say this other one was in my working area. So at this point, you retrieve all your colonists from your working area and from this side of the board that you're moving over to and place them in your working or your, your living quarters in open spaces. If for some reason I had another colonist out here, and I was full up in my living quarters. So if I only have four open spots and I had a fifth one, that fifth one just goes off to the side of my board. I have to somehow find a way to gather them again. After that, your character would move to one of the spaces to uh, its section where it's traveling to. So here we're going left, so I get to choose one, two, three, or four. Again, if you put it on one of the spaces with an icon, you would gain that benefit. So that would gain the warehouse. Here is gain a tech tile. Here it's pay a water or a plant to gain an additional colonist. So that's some way I could get my other colonists back if I had an open space for it. And it's the same way uh, going the opposite direction with one change. So if this shuttle was going from the orbit to the colony, the first person would do this uh, discovery tile phase here. So you would choose one of these tiles and you place it out on the board. So it has to go three spaces away from your rover. So if I'm down here, it can go anywhere as long as it's three spaces away. So one, two, and three, we'll go right there. Then you would refill that for the next person. 
And this spot is very similar to this one we had over here where you would gather anyone who was on that side of the board that's yours. So if I had somebody here, <laughs> then I would collect them and put them back to my living quarters. And then I would get to choose one of these spaces to go to. So again, if I went there, I would go to the warehouse and take the supplies from the warehouse. So you would do this in turn order for anyone who wanted to travel. You do not have to travel. So if we're going this way, I choose to travel following those same steps, going there. Steve says, I'm chilling, I'm yep. good. Because he has work to do over here. He doesn't want to waste time coming over there. He's not going anywhere. So I would go through those steps and then the new turn would start. And because I am now to the left of Steve, I would be first player. He would be the second player. But that's not your only way to travel. Correct. Yeah, you do not have to wait for the shuttle phase to travel. Uh, additionally, you can travel during the shuttle phase if you're on the opposite side of the board. So for that, let's say that that shuttle just moved. So because Nick took it over, it's now sitting uh, over there somewhere. I, on my player board, have two ships. So I've unlocked ships. I'm like, oh, I need to do one more action over on the right-hand side of the board but then I do want to go over to the left side. Mm -hmm. So I took my first turn, did my action. <laughs> now, on my next turn, I can now use this shuttle mm -hmm. and now move my player to the other side. I get these two or this action, depending which side you're going on to. You would not... For the shuttle, you, or for the shuttle, you would... Yes, yeah, so you get yeah. everything, actually. Nice. So for me, because I was here, I'm going this way. I would get any resources based on the board. I would get any workers back, and then same thing, I would place this down. But let's say I want to place it right there, because I'm like, okay, I did what I need to do over here, but now I really want to get a jump start over there and get my next move in before Nick. Mm -hmm. So I go to the blank space. I don't get anything, but I do get first turn order. Yep. Pain in my rear end. And again, you can do that shuttle or the uh, using your spaceship at any point in time during your turn doesn't have to be when the shuttle's moving. It can be at any point, instead of taking your main action, that becomes your main action to spend a ship. And when you spend a ship, you just remove it from the game. Yes. You no longer have it, and then you go through those phases and come over. And so at this point, you may remember when we were talking about the landing pod, which was the action from the orbit. So the landing pod is very similar to using your spaceship with one key difference. When doing the landing pod action, you do not have to spend a ship. You can do it at any point in time on your turn if you're on the orbit side. But that is where you do not do this discovery tile section. You skip over that, you just do this and these actions. Of course, from the colony side, you cannot access the landing pod unless you have a specific card that says you can. If you're traditionally though, if you're going from the colony to orbit, you'll have to take that spending a ship action to move or you have to wait for the shuttle to come back and bring you back out there. Yep. Uh, and then the last part of this whole process, as we mentioned, other than taking actions, gear them back and forth in whatever way you deem necessary is you do have a bunch of executive actions available to you. So we brought them up mm -hmm. that they exist. Uh, if you want more details, they are in the reference guide, but it's this whole list of actions on the left hand side here. Again, you must have them unlocked. The main one I just want to call out is the very bottom one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So the bottom one is the only one that works a little differently. So everything here is required based on crystal cost. So two crystals, you get to do this, which is go to the warehouse mm -hmm. and so on. This one has two crystals slash scientists. The way this works is over here, if you have this available. So I built this advanced building for... Oh, there we go. We'll do that. I built this advanced building for green. Nick, let's just say, had this advanced building for gray. I have the gray scientist. I, as the owner of this scientist, can decide when to use them. So as an executive action, I can either pay two crystals to do my own card's worth of action, which would be I can place a green tile. Still have to pay the cost and everything, but you can place a green tile. Nick's card, I can pay two crystals to use, but he gets a benefit. 
Uh, or, no, I can't. That's true. Uh, so I'll pay two crystals to use mine. If I use the scientist, I do not have to pay the two crystals, but I can use opposing players' cards. Yeah. Pro and con. Pro, you get more opportunities because there's going to be new effects. Every card has a different effect. The con is once I put this over here, he now has access to that as well. Mm -hmm. I still have the geochemist card, so any endgame scoring, I still remain and keep. But until this moves somewhere else, back to my side, he also can utilize this executive action. Without having to pay the crystals. If the scientist wasn't there, I could still do it, but I would have to pay the yeah. crystals to do so. And you can see here, does not require meeples, but you can pay extra to do it over and over and over again. Mm hmm uh, which definitely comes into play towards the end of our playthrough, so check that out when it's live. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, so one thing we forgot to mention here, my bad, with the shuttle phase, as you do see the one, two, and three wow. at the top there, and this kind of corresponds to the LSS. So a lot of these things are intertwined. So the one, two, and three dictates where, so that's where the shuttle is going to go, and that is dictated based on your colony level here, and you'll see the the one here, which is really just the place that you start at, at the beginning of the game, and then you have a two and three. So when you get up to uh, the three section, that means you'll start at the three. For most of the game, you'll be at that two section until you advance your colony. So the number here, tell, or sorry, the number that is here will tell you where to place your shuttle when you go through that shuttle phase and uh, come over. Yep. So once you've uh, been playing for a while, you're gonna be doing different things that are gonna bring you closer and closer to end game. And that is called the missions. So as we brought up, we do have three mission cards on the board. We also have two other things that will trigger end game missions. So down here, we have a three. This is where that cube is. You can see a little picture here of the mission card. That is those three, but also there's mission card pictures on the three and the four slot of the LSS grouping. So we'll just start on the top left. So letter A is any time you buy a scientist. So I have one geochemist scientist. This would go down by one, so from four to three. There's only six scientists available. That's why those numbers are fairly low. Mm -hmm. But they do cost two resources each to be able to purchase, and you can only purchase it once. So as soon as that hits the green check mark at the end of the line, you would move this marker down one. Over here in letter B, this is these tiles. Either your rover picks them up or your bot destroys them, it moves down. Again, if it hits the green check mark, you move it down. And then over here, letter C for this one, is anytime you have this tile, you actually have to use the rover to pick it up. It, mm -hmm. If you destroy it with a bot, it does not count. You must use the rover to pick it up. It immediately goes into effect, and then this moves down. The interesting thing here is you can trigger multiple on the same turn. Mm -hmm. For example, let's say this was on one, this was on one, if you had a scenario like this, your rover could go here, pick this up, move two, and then spend two crystals to pick this up, it triggers both of those. So you could put yourself in a scenario to kind of rush endgame, mm -hmm. uh, make things a little bit more complicated for all the rest of the players, because as I mentioned, the LSS board also plays a, a part here. So for the LSS board, once all four of these have moved up one space, this marker moves up. It has two things here. Well, three. Nick already mentioned the shuttle thing, so it goes to level three on the shuttle. You would reset all of your uh, blueprint cards. Yep. So on the blueprint deck over here on the left, there is a listing right there uh, on how it sets up. Blue is level one. Red is level three. Yep. So you would clear off everything from the prior phase layer out the last six of level one here, and then the top lane would be the first six of level three. And you should have 12 cards remaining if you're moving into the three sector. Boop. The last thing here, as again, it has the picture, it's gonna move this down one. So if you had already triggered two of them on the board, this went down to one, someone was the last person to move this up, triggers this, all of a sudden, end game triggers. So, based on the mission cards at hand, even though it says long game, some of these can be triggered very quickly, mm -hmm. especially as you're moving your bots and your rovers around the board. And end game can trigger pretty fast. 
for our game, it took a few hours still <laughs> because we were kind of like pacing it out. We didn't want yeah. to trigger it too early. Uh, something else with the colony, when the colony advances, the, the warehouse also refreshes yes, along with the blueprint board. So you would just go through and add in the resources for the empty spots that have been taken, abiding by your player account. Yep. And then the last thing over here on this LSS board, when that happens, is this now refreshes. So if you move and build a wind or air building, this now re-triggers this effect, and you get this resource because it moved up again. And then if you happen to get to level four, this would move one more time, and then you would refresh mm -hmm. the market again of the warehouse as well as the cards. Once you're done with number one, you just follow this arrow. Boop. Yep. To Let's give you the actual video. Uh, this bottom corner right here where the three arrows are, and now we go into endgame scoring. Almost. Oh, what did I miss? When endgame is triggered, you feel Oh, I did, yeah. Yes. Yes. So if endgame's triggered, so right now there's a good example. So we're both here. We're in uh, the second turn here, or yeah, at this point, the second turn of this round, right? So when endgame is triggered, you finish the round and you do the shuttle phase. So finish your turns, this comes here, do the shuttle stuff, bop, 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 bop. We come over here. Get our bonus. This resets, we'll say, to three because based on where that's at. And you actually play one more entire round. So all the way through, but you do not do the shuttle phase. And then you go to end game scoring. So again, when you trigger end game, you finish your current round, which is all the way through shuttle phase, and then you play an entire another round without the shuttle phase. And then, yeah, you score points. Yeah. Uh, and again, just to clarify, for end game scoring triggers, there's five triggers on the board the three cards plus these two yep. you only need to do three of them yep. so any three any order some of them could happen on the same turn in theory all three could trigger on the same turn mm -hmm. uh, and you can go right from three to zero and then as nick just mentioned we go through the rest of that once that final extra turn is over you literally leave everything as is you'll go through and just move this token to the right and count each of these final scoring so I'm just going to go through with you. First one, triple arrows. Matches triple arrows right here on the board. So what this means is each colony you have, you would have made a marker on the spaces here. If you had one, which I did, I would gain one. Two, four, seven, eleven, if you get up to five. <laughs> one. <laughs> here is based on ships. This is not ships unlocked. This is ship specifically sitting here. Mm -hmm. So I used one of my ships to travel. This ship is out of the game. It's unlocked, so I can still use this executive action, but I cannot use the ship for any endgame scoring. Yep. So I get three for each ship here, which is just one ship. One, two, three. <laughs> Next up comes colonists. Mm -hmm. So in your warehouse, you have your living quarters, which give you three. As you build your settlements, you have 6, 10, 15, 21 available. You don't just get those by building these. What you need to have is workers in these areas. Mm -hmm. The way this happens is right now, let's just say I had four workers. Before you count this step, and it says in the rule book, you're going to go onto the game board bring back any workers that were on the your side ship. of orbit or it's based, just based on where your player just probably. based on where your player so we're on the right side of the board i had three workers boom 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 they will go in if you had a worker on a mine it does not move it stays on the mine and if you had a worker on the opposite side of the board from where you are it stays over there as well yes just to reiterate so now i have at least one worker in this range I get 10. On Nick's side, he... I have the 10 unlocked, but I'm one shy. So I unfortunately didn't get 10. I am stuck at six. Yep. That's the side. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is you are looking at tactiles. Tactile. Tactile. <laughs> tactile. We just played tactile with <laughs> Friendly Bee Gaming Company, yeah. so it's in there. Huh? Do you want to yeah. prep this? 
Oh, for one of these? For you. Sure. Uh, so on my side, I, let's say, only have the one. I focused heavily on a lot of other things. Maybe I used Nick's side and just gave him some free oxygen and helped him breathe a little better. <laughs> and I just utilized what he had and didn't focus on building this out. So I only get four, which is right here. Yep. But if we go over to Nick's side, he has a bunch. I put in some work, but it's the only work that I did, so it didn't really help me out as much. But so this uh, private goal card that you see here on my board is part of the upgrade pack. So again, this isn't in the base version of the game, but what these are, and they're all the same, is they're gonna give you a pattern. So this has orange dots on here, and the pattern is going to mimic where you need to have tech tiles at the end of the game on your tech tile section. So you can see I have that same matching pattern. So in doing so, I not only get the 15 points you can see here on the board, I also get an additional nine for matching that pattern. Yep. Uh, the benefit is every pattern displayed will always add up on the top of the game board to 15. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to get stuck in a situation where you only got like 8 and then plus the 9 and someone else got 15 or 16 because they just went for the higher numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, for everyone who goes for that, we'll always have the same amount of points, which is kind of nice. That was something I was looking at too. I was like, okay, if, if, if I just ignored that, right? So 15, 9, 24, if I just like tried to push everything... <laughs> as high as possible because realistically i could have like last game i could have had 20, six yeah 24 if you still only have five is yeah. the max yeah so it does balance but you can yeah. the next book you can get six seven eight nine mm -hmm. in a two-player game that's unlikely because both players are going to be taking them uh but it is possible that one player could get like yeah. eight or nine of them and a word of note so for this here if I had this situation where I had this matching and I was like, you know what? There's one more tech tile on there. I'm going to take it so Steve can't get it. Once it's on my board, this is no longer going to get yeah. scored. You have to have that pattern and only that pattern. that pattern Yep. to score those nine points. Next. Next up, we have cards. Cards. <laughs> Blueprints. Yeah, cards. Blueprints. <laughs> That's these right here. So if we go down to this view. These blueprints are the cards we've gained through different turns. And let's just say that I had this scenario here where because of the game board, I had two green. I'm like, ooh, I can get a third out there and I can make some work. So I chose to grab this one here, but I wasn't able to build it. Hmm. You got to look at the bottom here. So this says plus or minus three and then the marker for OP. This does not have the advanced building on it. The advanced building is on the tile on the map. I can gain three points. This one still has the advanced building on it, means I get minus three points. So that's what we mentioned before. Don't just willy-nilly grab a bunch of blueprints. Yeah. You need to complete them to actually deem the victory points, or you're going to go backwards. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I got zero, and Nick got positive three. That's right. Next up is the Scientist. scientists. Scientists are your cards Sorry, down here. Based on what scientists you have dictates what the endgame scoring situation is. So the geochemist does not look at the oxygen symbol. So you're not looking at the game board for oxygen. You're looking very specific to this pattern here, which is settlements. So for every settlement on the board, regardless of ownership, so whether you own it or your opponent owns it, you get... Three victory points. So Nick had a settlement on his shelter. Mm -hmm. I would gain three victory points or three OP. Yep. If we both had one, I would gain the three for mine and the three for his. It's OP. It is. And then the final one is your Earth contract goals. That is this stack right here with the matching symbol. So any of them that you bought throughout the game, if they're in the display, it doesn't matter. But if I use one of my turns to take this card because I'm like, ooh, I will be able to complete this, I can then score upon it. If, for example, I had this card that required me to own a colony of three, so that's what this symbol is here. I'll touch you the other one. I bet. No, no, this works. Uh, so let's say I, had a I need to have a colony of three 
green with two advanced buildings. I have three right here for blueprints. That's not the same card. There is a card in there that says if you own three green blueprints, regardless if you've made the building or not, you can get points. But for this scenario, you need to have a colony of green and have two settlements. They don't have to be touching each other, but there is a specific scenario similar to what Nick brought up with the tap. Nope. The tech uh, tiles. Yeah, and the, just uh, to clear the, <laughs> the, the buildings don't have to be next to each other, but the tiles have to be a colony. Yeah, to each other. <laughs> yeah so you have to have a colony of tiles, but the buildings just have to exist. This picture has to match exactly. Last game, for example, I was just going crazy with green. If I hypothetically built another green right here, I no longer have completed this pattern because this pattern required three with two advanced buildings. I have four with two. I literally will not score this anymore. Mm -hmm. So be careful on how you're continuing to build. Or and your opponent know, can screw you over and, and build next to it too. for it. Yeah, that's smart. I didn't even think about that. Also, oh, so the whole time. <laughs> when, uh, when you said this to match exactly, it's only in reference to the tiles. Yes. You don't have to have your buildings next to each other like it's shown there. Yeah. And it specifies that in the rulebook for you. Yep. And then same thing on uh, this one here. If you complete it successfully, you get... This VP, if you complete it unsuccessfully, like I just showed in that example, having four tiles, you would get the negative VP. Uh, yeah, so there was some... I, I didn't know if you knew it or not. I, I didn't take it. That's why I didn't build those last green ones until the very, very end. Ah, I gotcha. And I'm like, I'm not giving you a chance to put a green on top of my I green. Gonna, I was nowhere up there. Yeah, that's so what I was watching. I was like, I'm not grabbing this yet yeah. until I know for a fact you're not going to screw with it. Yep, smart. Uh, but then that's the end game of scoring. You finish the line, boom, you're done. Whoever's in the lead is the winner. Uh, if you're both tied at the end, um, There's whoever goes to Mars first in real life wins. <laughs> <laughs> There's tiebreakers in the rule book for, for that. And then, of course, there's tons of symbols and icons, and that's all detailed in the rule books and the reference book. Uh, very clearly, easy to find, easy to pull up and go through. Um, but you know, the best way to learn how to play the game is to get your hands on it and start playing. Yeah. But uh, Once you get the feel for the round structure, it's pretty easy. I mean, it's one main action and then one executive action if you can. And that's just round after round I'm doing that. Yeah. Over and over. And just trying to combo as much as you can in some sort of way. It's definitely not a as combo-y as something like Inventions or, or Bot Weather Factory Machine or, or, or Bot Factory, yeah. stuff like that. Uh, so you have to be very precise with kind of what you're doing. And you'll find in the beginning of the game, it can be difficult because you have limited resources and you have to really use those wisely and choose what you're going to do to potentially get more resources or this or that. And uh, if you get television, like I did, then <laughs> you will lose by a good amount. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the funny thing is you built all of your shelters. Mm -hmm. So you had the ability to have so many resources where I only oh, yeah, had I did, two out I, there. At the end, I had And you did. But I, I just I, I, I found a way to be able to use and get, use and get, back and forth, back and forth yeah. real quick. Yeah. And it just worked. Yeah. But thank you for joining us here at Baldwin Board Games as we showed you how to play On Mars. Yeah. By Vital Lacerda and Eagle Griffin Games. Stay tuned. Later this week, you will see a how to play and play through of CO2. So bringing it back to Earth and we're going to try and clean up some pollution. Good chance. We're not going to do it. <laughs> yeah, very good chance that we will lose at that. Uh, the co-op slash competitive games we tend not to do too well at. We got lucky we, we, when we played it the other night. We almost um, lost. We were literally on the very last space one more turn and we would have lost. Yeah. Yeah. So that should be a good watch. Uh, but so tune in. That'll be going up Friday. You're watching this on Wednesday. And or Thursday. I'm not sure what uh what we're gonna be playing this coming Thursday. Nothing because you're we're all both off. Yep, we're yep. both off. You're right. So nothing yep. on Twitch. Yeah, so uh yeah. again, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh we will have a week off. We have Los Angeles Comic Con and uh some moving going on. Yep. So the first week of October, we will not be streaming or making any content. So that second week in October when we normally would post, we'll have nothing. Uh, we might be able to get a cribbage game in, maybe. Uh, but that's yeah, about that's it. it. Anyway, but, okay. On YouTube, though. Oh, we'll, we post, on YouTube. we'll be posting on YouTube that first week. But that's about yeah. Uh, but then, yeah, catch us back uh, on our IG, on our Discord. We'll keep you updated. 
on our fun spooky month of October. Yes, yeah, so we're trying to get some friends on if we can somehow figure out a way to finagle all this around, get around the table, try and get who goes there. We have Mixtape Massacre. Damnation. Damnation's a fun one. Uh, we have a bunch, so we're going to try and fit them in. We'll see what we happens. We also have a Halloween night as a Thursday. That's true. We'll do a good Halloween game night. Yeah. Fun one. Yeah. Get yeah. some people over, dressed in costume. Oh, Has maybe. to be a requirement. Has to be a requirement, yeah. True. It was Mr. Clean. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for joining us here at Bald and Board Games. I'm Bald. I'm Bored.